Secret Seeds are worlds that generate in a special way, which will make your playthroughs on them completely different. This can be done through smaller worlds, like Not the Bees, which makes the world bee-themed, with honey replacing the water. Or more extreme ones, like Don't Dig Up, which makes you start in the underworld, alongside some other major world changes. And because in the next Terraria update, 1.4.5, we will be talking about the Secret Seeds a lot, I thought it was time to make an updated video going over all of the current Secret Seeds. Which which is exactly what we'll be going over in this video. Before jumping into this, I want to quickly explain how to actually make these worlds, as I've noticed a good bit of people confused in past videos of mine where I show them off. To start, on screen right now, I have an example of how I'll be showing the seeds, with the actual seed that you need as the lines of text I'm zooming into right now. And then, all you have to do is take that phrase and enter it in the seed option when you're making the world. Lastly, there is a very rare chance that you can have a secret seed world completely by chance without entering a specific seed. So, if you want to do something like a shiny hunt in Terraria, that could be something to look into. With all that out of the way, let's get into the seeds. Starting with arguably the most useful secret seed, we have the Celebration Seed. This was a seed made to celebrate Terraria's 10th anniversary, and just like most of the seeds in this video, it has a good number of special rules and world changes. Firstly, you will spawn on a beach alongside multiple NPCs, including the princess who will sell the slime staff which is normally a 1 in 10,000 drop rate item from slimes. Besides the NPCs, the beach you spawn on will also have blue sand, and multiple structures in the world will be pink or some other bright color, like the dungeon, the giant living trees you can find in forest biomes, and the pyramid all being pink, and the jungle temple being purple and green. Besides the world generation, you are also able to find special enemies in it, which are the gold slime, which is a rare spawn, and the jungle mimic, which was unused for a good bit, before finally being used here. While the world generation and enemies are neat, they aren't what makes this seed so useful, because even beside you being able to buy the slime staff, it also has a higher drop rate, alongside the rod of discord and discount cards. Another great thing is that the traveling merchant will always sell two more items. The wizard hat will give you an extra minion slot, the bosses are smaller, and some other smaller changes, like the princess selling various other rare items that can be pretty useful, besides just the slime staff. Moving on to the next one, we have the Constant Seed. This is a seed that is a part of the Don't Starve Together collaboration, and changes the Terraria world a lot. The first thing you'll most definitely notice is the filter the world has, which is meant to make it look more like Don't Starve Together. Besides that, the world will also make marble biomes, with spider spawners generating on the surface, alongside the caves generating in a different way as well. Besides the world generation, the seed will also give you a hunger system, which will force you to eat roughly every 10 minutes or so or you'll start taking damage. And then you can also start taking a ton of damage in pitch black darkness, so you'll need to keep some light sources on you at all times. There are also some other smaller changes as well, like certain light-related items being able to lose their flame and rain, lead and platinum ore never generating, and more. Another secret seed that gives you a one-of-a-kind feature which you can't get in other Terraria worlds is For the Worthy. But it's not something everyone will want, which is making the game much harder. This seed will always bump up your game's difficulty, but if you choose the hardest option you normally have available, then your world will be put into legendary difficulty. Just like you might expect, this makes the game incredibly hard, but there are some other changes besides just how much damage everything can deal. Like making Red's Potion give you three helpful buffs instead of a ton of harmful debuffs, giving the bosses new AI, bunnies being replaced with explosive ones, some of the water being changed to lava, and some smaller things meant to make the playthrough much harder, like making pots drop bombs. Unlike most of the secret seeds though, there isn't much of any changes to the world generation, although there are a few things, like making glowing moss biomes bigger. But luckily, there is one more seed that has the legendary difficulty and changes a lot with the world generation, which we'll cover later on in this video. Next, let's take a look at the seed I was showing off as an example, which is the Not the Bees seed. This will make a world that is mainly a jungle biome, with the oceans being honey, and the sand in the desert and beaches also being honey. Alongside the ocean being honey, most of the water in the world is also replaced by honey, and you will also run into a ton of queen bee larvae all over the world, which you normally only find in hives underground in the jungle. And outside of the interesting world generation, and the fact the merchant will be your starting NPC instead of the guide, there really isn't too much else to talk about with this seed, so we'll move on to the next one. Moving on to a smaller but still fun one, we have the 9th Anniversary World. This is a world that's meant to be more fun than useful, like that celebration seed, which it does 
does by first having some pretty interesting world generation. In this world, both evil biomes will spawn, alongside things like world generation just having less rules overall. So you're able to get things like this massive hill, having a huge area of only lava in the underworld, the dungeon entrance being through a giant living tree, and some other small changes, like the oceans having a cave under them. Besides just the world, the seed is also the only way to get the Moonlord Legs vanity item. There are also some other small changes, like the party girl replacing the guide, the old man spawning a generated house, and some other small things that we won't cover here since they aren't majorly game-changing, and I want to keep this video as short as possible for you guys. Next up, we have the No Trap Seed. Unlike the name implies, this seed will make a world that has a lot more traps in the world, with there being one in almost every space. The traps are also tweaked within themselves, with boulders being replaced with bouncy ones so they have more chances to hit you. The underworld will have geyser spawn, the floating islands will have explosives on them, the jungle temple having a ton of TNT, and some more smaller traps, like the oceans having a pile of boulders. Getting back to the huge secret seeds now, we have the Don't Dig Up Seed. This is a seed that we got in the recent 1.4.4 update, and just like the name implies, you will have to be doing a lot of digging in this world. In this seed, you will spawn and start in the underworld, with you having to work your way up to the surface over time, which isn't too friendly either. The entire surface will be completely infected, and it will always be nighttime no matter what, and if you decide to go to the very top of the map, it'll just instantly kill you. Another thing that makes the surface super hard here is its falling stars, which normally are super helpful, but here they'll just damage you if they land on you. Besides the world though, the NPCs are also slightly changed, with the starting NPC now being the tax collector. And the steampunker won't sell the contaminator anymore either. There are some other smaller changes, like certain weapons being obtained in different ways than normal, slight tweaks to the weapons themselves, and some other one-off things. But to save time, we're going to go ahead and move on to the final secret seed. Hello everybody, Waffle Time here, and at long, long last we're on to the last secret seed, which is commonly referred to as the Zenith or Everything Seed. This seed is a disgusting, putrid amalgamation of every secret seed our King Terraria Slime, aka T Slizzle, has covered so far, but it also has its own special features that you can't get in any other seed, with the end goal of creating the hardest Terraria playthrough possible, and ensuring you'll pull every last strand of your hair out of your head in frustration, including your eyebrows. To start things off, the world can get the legendary difficulty, so everything will be excruciatingly harder to do, but that's just the tip of the iceberg, isn't it? The world itself will seem like the Don't Dig Up seed, so you'll start in the underworld and have to slowly, and please, let me be sure to reiterate and emphasize, slowly dig your way up to the surface. Which just when you're praying for the sanctity and safety of the lush forests above, you'll find the top of your world will be fully infected with both evil biomes as soon as you start. But don't worry, you could always use purification powder to fix your world up. Just kidding, that would make life feel good for a short, short while. And that is apparently not permitted in this seed at any given moment, since the Dryad won't even offer a crumb of purification powder. While you're trying to get to the surface, you'll also have to deal with traps, slapping you in the forehead at full strength and force in seemingly every single nook and cranny of the map, which is normally a part of the No Traps seed. Another feature you'll have to deal with which will make you want to take a bite out of your monitor is the Hunger feature, which is from the Constant seed, which is short for constantly wanting to put your PC into a hydraulic press seed. There's a lot more small one-off features that make this seed much harder, like falling stars killing you for some unknown, odd, strange reason, wires being invisible until you beat Skeletron just to make your life even more difficult constantly, queen bee larva being scattered around the map to make sure you don't feel a lick of game progression, as well as crisp honey blocks not only being filled to the brim with lava just to shower all over the tops of our heads, but also being able to cook you into a disease-ridden pizza slice from the gas station at merely the slightest touch. Crisp honey blocks want to be hellstone stone so badly in this seed that it's embarrassing. But because we could be here all day going over these one-off changes and features as well as the tweaked outrageously difficult boss AI that'll make you want to have a full-on meltdown in public, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the biggest feature of this seed, which would be its exclusive boss and exclusive item. In this seed, instead of beating the mechanical bosses individually, you'll have to fight a boss that is a mix of all three of them at once, which is called Mechdusa. That's right, expect any progression you were hoping on achieving to come to a screeching halt. Expect any joy you felt playing this seed to be turned into dust by Thanos Snap, because this boss is arguably the hardest boss in the game at the moment. And if you do actually somehow manage to summon and defeat this boss, then you'll get Waffle's Iron. Oh me oh my, this happens to be a weapon based on the YouTuber Waffle Time, who I hear is pretty cool, and supposedly used to have nice hair before it all fell out playing the seed. 
With this beautiful weapon shooting out waffles that deal 50 base damage when it's swung, this weapon will not disappoint. Overall, if you're looking to play Terraria in a way that'll make you regret ever trying it because of how unreasonably difficult it is, then this is, without a doubt in my mind, the secret seed for you. Now, while the Zenith Seed was the last secret seed in the game, there is a special map that you can get that lets you see what the next Terraria update will be like, which is through the Shimmer Secret Seed map. This is a seed that you'll be able to make in 1.4.5 using the Combo Secret Seeds feature, with it being a mix of the Celebration, No Traps, For the Worthy, and the 9th Anniversary Seed. Besides it having features from all of those maps though, this special combo will also do some special things, like changing the ocean to Shimmer, making it pretty fun to mess around with. If you want to get this map for yourself, you can just search up the map I have on screen now in Terraria Steam Workshop. Or if you're on mobile, you can go to my Discord server and find the world file itself in my custom maps download channel. That wraps up our look into all of the secret seeds as of 1.4.4. If you made it this far into the video, let me know by commenting gold slime and also tell me what your favorite secret seed is. Thanks for sticking to the end. Be sure to like and subscribe for more Terraria videos like this in the future. And as always, make sure to have a wonderful day. Thank <laughs> you.